Hadoop FS test. Okay, this Hadoop FS test can be used to check for a file if they are a file, if they are directory, and so on. Let us see what exactly it can do for you. Okay, so the syntax is simple Hadoop FS hyphen test, and then you can pass some flag, you can pass some optional parameters and the location of a file which you want to test, right? And what are these? Let us see here. See here, D E F S w r z if i want to check if a file is directory or not then you should use minus d right and it will it will check if it is a directory then it will return you zero okay similarly if you want to check if the path exists or not right so you can say hyphen e and it will return you zero if the path exists otherwise it will return you one okay similarly if you want to check if the path is actually a file right so you'll say hyphen f and it will return you zero if the path is really a file okay now similarly if you want to check if the path is not empty then you will say hyphen s and if the path is not empty then it will return you zero again if you want to check if the path exists and write permission is there on that particular path then you'll say hyphen w okay similarly hyphen r if the path exists and read permission is granted so you can see uh, like you can check if i can read the data from this path or not right again if the file is of zero length then it returns you zero like hyphen z it will be used to check if the file does not have anything if the content of the file is zero that means if the file is empty okay now let's move on so you can test this out with any file whatever you have created so far in your sdfs right so if i assume that i have slash user sd user word two so first of all first of all check if this file is present or not right so let's go back to our sdfs so first let us try to check if the path exists or not so you say hadoop fs hyphen ls and say paste okay i want to see if this file is present or not this file is not even present okay now if it is not present what you can do is you can try to test right see here i'm using hyphen e and what is this hyphen e hyphen e will check if the path exists if the path exists it should return you zero okay so let us try to see what exactly it gives to me right so okay so it did not give you anything but then how do you check you can just check it like this okay see here it gave you one the reason is because the file does not exist right if the file would have been uh, if the file would have present then it would have given you zero right so that's what it is so it will return you zero means the file exists if it is not present then it will return you one right so now similarly you can just say hadoop fs hyphen ls check what are, what are the files available at least okay so see here you have fruits and sports.txt you can check against this right you can check against this so you can just say you can just say this right and then you try to see what is the value of this and if you see the file exists and hence it is showing you zero yes the file exists what we'll do next is we'll say hadoop dfs hyphen test hyphen e. we have done this right so see this is for zero and this is for one if it exists it returns you zero if it does not exist then it returns you one let's move on now i want to check if the file is empty or not empty okay so check it against anything right so for example uh, i would say uh, i would say hyphen z right i i would say hyphen z with fruits and sports.txt okay so let me say sdfs dfs hyphen test hyphen z and i'll use this path i want to check if i want to check if this file is empty or not okay done now again you do this it is saying you one right so see here hyphen z so hyphen z is returning you one that means it is not empty so check this z it says if the length is zero it returns you zero if the length is not zero then it will return you one okay so that's what it is still it still gives you one if the file does not exist that is also important what it is saying is if the file does not exist then also it is going to return you one right because see this parameter will give you zero only if the file is empty otherwise it will give you one and that otherwise is even if the file does not exist it re still returns you one it is supposed to return you zero only if the file is empty otherwise it should return you one right so that's what it is now similarly you can say sdfs dfs hyphen test hyphen d which is used to check if the file is if the, if the path is a directory or not right so let's check this out so uh, let's say let's do this okay let's do this and we'll again say this okay now see what it gave me it gave me one 
okay and let me check what do i i have hadoop fs hyphen ls and just say enter do i have what 2.txt let's see okay so we do not even have a what 2.txt right so see this is supposed to give you zero if this is a directory okay this is supposed to give you zero if this is a directory now if anything else it will return you one right right and that's why it is returning you one here let us try to do that with some real directory okay so see here i can see that all these are directories it's not a data one data one one and so on so let me say data one let me say data one it is basically a directory and i'm trying to check if this is a directory or not right and i'll say tell me if it is a directory yes if it is a directory it will return you zero otherwise not okay so likewise you can just test around all these commands right so just say hyphen r it will see if in the path has read permission then it will return you zero and so on okay now let's move on so now the next thing is we'll try to see hadoop fs text and we have already seen that earlier right and as you know you can see the content of a file using cat as well as using test right what was the difference guys between these two the difference was your cat cannot cat does not support encoding whereas your text supports encoding okay and the other differences you can also see is if you're working on uh, the production and if you are using the sequence file format it has the capability to read the data from sequence file format as well okay so let's try to do this i'll say hadoop fs hyphen test word1.txt okay so if you have word1.txt i'm saying i want to see the content of that word1.txt so let me do what let me you know do something to make all this code work right because we do not have word1.txt directly is not it so let me do what i'll go back here and say hadoop fs hyphen ls okay and i know that i have moved everything into my word count right if you remember our yesterday session so i'll say hadoop fs hyphen ls word count right and you'll see word one word two uh, and all are all moved to this particular location let me do what let me copy this to the main folder okay so that all our example will work as it is i'll say hadoop fs hyphen copy uh word count slash word 2.txt to word 1.txt enter i've copied my word 1.txt in my local place which will help me to start reading this file right so now if i say hadoop fs hyphen ls i should see word one.txt here itself so check it out i have word one.txt now let me check what is the content in this i'll say uh, hadoop fs hyphen cat or text whatever you can use you will say word one.txt right and it will tell you what is the content of the file this file has only apple ball uh, apple apple ball right next you can also do something like this see here this will give you the content of the file we know it right cat or text whatever you do okay but then on it you can say give me the first three lines you can of course do that right so you can use head command and head is a basically in linux command okay so head hyphen three can help you to extract only the first three lines of a big file okay so uh, for example if you have uh, a log file and you want to check the first hundred lines of the log file you can say head minus hundred and that will give you the first hundred lines of a log file is not it so that's what it does right so in our case it will just give you the same output because we do not have a lot of um, you know like lines in that particular file right so just say enter and you just see only that right but then if you remember we had copied some hadoop logs in our previous example right so you can definitely do that so you can say hadoop fs hyphen ls hadoop underscore logs this is the folder which we had created right and you have a lot of files so you can definitely say hadoop fs hyphen text right what do you want to read i want to read hadoop underscore logs slash maybe this particular file maybe this particular file right so say copy say paste done and then you can put a pipe symbol here saying that hey now on this output is i want to say a uh, head of head of minus five okay so you just say head of minus five okay now see here when you say head of minus five it gave you the first five lines count it out one two three four five uh six not really like it should be five lines probably you know like these are uh, like two of these lines should uh, could be uh, like uh, two lines what you see could be a single line but then it should give you only five lines okay similarly you can do anything on this you can say i want to get uh, the last uh, let's say 10 lines 
Okay, so the last 10 lines of this file would be shown. Now see here, this is this does not mean that these two are two different lines. This could be a single line, right? This could be a single line and so on. So uh, all together, it will give you uh, 10 lines uh, all together. Now we will talk about, we will talk about touch. Okay, so Hadoop FS touch, what it can do is let's see, updates the access and modification time of a file specified by the path to the current time so for example you have created a file right and then what you want to do is you just want to update the timestamp then you use touch and this is the same touch command what anybody was is, is using in your linux right so you can say hadoop fs hyphen touch user sd user if you have this file you can update the timestamp now if the file does not exist then a zero length file is created at that path with current timestamp uh, with current time as a timestamp of that URI. So let's try to do this. So you can also use this to create a file if they do not exist, right? So if the file does not exist, then you can create the file. Okay. So let's do this. Okay. Now I'll say Hadoop FS ls. Now you'll see what 456.txt is created. Okay. With the current timestamp. And if you say date, if you see the timestamp is seven. October 958. So it was just created a few seconds ago, right? So 2157, right? And then it is PM, right? That means 21, right? So this time zone is different than our real time. That, that's okay. But then it creates the file as per the server time. We created a file called word456.txt, uh, right? So let me say Hadoop FS hyphen ls. Now I have a file word456.txt and the timestamp you will see 2157. Okay. Now what you can do is you can again execute the same command and this time what it does, it just updates the creation time, right? So uh, again, go back here and say paste, right? And I can say Hadoop FS hyphen ls. So if you see now it is 2159, earlier it was 2157. So it has updated the timestamp of the created date. Okay. That's what the touch can do for you. All right. Now let's move to the next. Next is touch Z. Okay. And what does it do? It creates a file of zero byte um, length. So let's try this out. So we'll say Hadoop FS does Z. Okay. And this created a file of uh, zero size, right? So an empty file. You can definitely create a new empty file using touch as well as does Z. Okay. So now you may ask me a question. Hey, why do you even have to create a empty file, right? Why do you even need to create an empty file anytime in SDFS? It is sometime required. Okay. For example, maybe you have created a framework and you have created your uh, program in such a way that if the folder contains an empty file, right? That means the job was successful. For example, if you have ever written any MapReduce job, you might have seen that a success file comes, right? When the job is submitted, when the, when the job is processed completely, a success file comes, right? And that success file is basically an empty file and it is basically used to tell that, you know, like uh, the the job was executed successfully, right? So sometime to uh, like you know like to satisfy such conditions, you may have to create an empty file. Okay. Now let me let me move on to the other uh, concept that is Hadoop FS count. So let's look into this, right? So Hadoop FS count can help you to count the files and folders inside a directory. Okay. So let's do this. So I'll say Hadoop FS hyphen uh, count hyphen h and dot. Okay. Now so now what it is saying, it is saying 1925, 2.7 gigs and dot. Okay. So let's see what is the, what actually it is saying. So the first line is basically there are folders, these many folders. Okay. The second column, the second column 11 is basically this is the total files. The third column is, this is the size of the total data. Okay. And the path is dot right so that means i'm talking about this similarly you can point out to any other location okay so what we will do is let us say uh, let's let's go back to uh, you know a proper path i'll say give me the data of hadoop underscore logs give me the data of hadoop underscore logs and I, let me see this also hadoop fs hyphen ls uh, hadoop let me also see this folder now look into this the first one says Hadoop underscore log has just one folder. The, the total folder is one, right? And then it says there are total five files, one, two, three, four, five. Okay. And the total size of this Hadoop 
uh, all these files and folders are uh, around 50 to NB. Okay. And I am basically talking about Hadoop underscore logs, right? So this gives you the information about all the files present in, um, in, a, in a particular path. Count can help you to know, uh, count helps you to understand how many files and folders are present there itself. Okay. Similarly, you can also do Hadoop FS hyphen count and point to a particular path. Now, if you are pointing to a particular file, then that file itself is not a directory, right? So what it will say, there is no folder because it's a file. Okay. And there is one file that is itself. That is itself. The length of this file is this and the path of this file is this. Okay. That's what you can do. Okay. Now let's move to the next. The next is find a file. Okay. So you can use a find command to search for a file. Okay. So let's do that. So you can say Hadoop FS hyphen find slash where do you want to find? And you can say name of the file is something like this. Okay. Let's try to search it out and let's see what exactly we get out of this. So if you see, I was just trying to find out a file called fruits.txt. And what it is saying is fruit.txt is present only in your thrash. So sometimes what happens, you might have uh, you know deleted some file and you remember the file name and you may be interested to check where exactly these files are present. So this can be really, really handy. So let's do something like this. I'll say fru star.txt. Now, if I see, if you see, when I just said fru star.txt, it has given us the information that one file is present in your thrash. The other two files, which starts with fru, are present in this particular location. So this can be very, very helpful when you want to search for a file in your SDFS, right? So anytime when you're working, you have written uh, you, you, you know, you remember the file name is something like this, and then you can just go and check uh, around that file. And this will help you to identify where exactly the files are present. So now let's talk about an important concept called this copy, very, very important. And you do it every time. Okay. So let's understand what exactly it is. So typically when you are working on a real time production, okay, a real time company's production will have a lot of production environment, a lot of staging environment okay so let's say you have seven production environment and let us say you have 12 uh, let's say you have seven production environment and let's say you have 12 uh, i would say uh, staging environment it is possible that you want to transfer the file across the cluster and if you want to transfer the file across the cluster you must use this copy okay so see here uh, let, let's take it this way okay I'll, I'll take an example say say we work with icici Say we work with ICICI, okay? And let us say uh, you have a seven production environment, right? So now the production environment could be something like this. I'll say prod dot mumbai dot ICICI dot com. Instead of writing local host or IP address, you may have this, uh, you know, uh, host name, right? So number one, and you may say prod dot Hyderabad dot icici dot com right prod dot pune like three words let's say icici dot com right so likewise a company may have a lot of production environment and the host name can be whatever they would like to uh, do right and you no know, like it's not necessary that when when they say mumbai that may not really mean that this server is located in mumbai probably right they might have just given a name is not it just to confuse the people you know if, if at all somebody is trying to attack the server for any by any reason we really don't want to know the people what is the location right and you may have let's say nine nine staging environment for example right so the staging environment could be something like this so stage dot mercury dot icsa.com right stage dot venus dot icaca dot com again again stays dot earth dot icaca dot com right now it does not mean that one server is really sitting at mercury it's not it so the name can be anything the name could be confusing for the others right but then at the end of the day if you are a developer with them you understand where the code has to be deployed okay i'll give an example when I was working with Apple, uh, you know, like uh, we have a lot of conference room, okay, uh, like a meeting room and all. And every meeting room is given a name. For example, one meeting room was given a name like Birla Mandir or Birla Temple. 
and then what happened one day uh, we had a meeting with uh, folks right so we had some meeting and my manager uh, was walking around and then he asked me suresh do you know where is birla temple uh, he actually meant where is this birla temple uh, um, stuff right and i told him yes we have to you know like uh, take an auto or you know like we have to go through that way and i was actually talking about the real birla temple right so this that was a funny moment anyways so <clears throat> the objective was to tell you that the names would be given in any order right it really does not matter but then it, they will make some meaningful name right and now you have let's say a lot of production environment and you have a lot of staging environment right and let's say this staging environment when we say you will have a lot of edge node again you will have a lot of edge node and using any of the edge node you can connect to this guy okay and from this place you can definitely connect to a lot of production uh, environment a lot of production environment not necessary all and all these things has to be done by your admin folks okay the devops team the data ops team they would basically have to take care of this the devops team should take care of this the connection configuration and everything all together as a developer you have as nodes you will connect to as nodes and log into this uh, machines from here you can push and pull the data okay now suppose you have executed a job in production you have executed a job in production done right and the job has written the data in let's say slash temp slash uh, let's say loan slash uh, let's say 01 august 2021 let's say right now the data is written here and what i want to do is this is the output okay the output is written in this location and what i have to do is i have to analyze that output right but then you are not allowed to do a lot of things in your production environment right so what you should do is you should quickly bring this data from your production to your staging is not it and then you do whatever you want you can there is no problem but then you are not allowed to do a lot of stuff in the production right so what you will do is you will use a disk copy okay you will use a disk copy you will say i want to copy the data from my production to my uh, staging that's how a disk copy works okay and when you do this remember a disk copy is always a map ready job internally it runs a map ready job that pulls this data and copies the data into this staging environment once this disk copy is done you can ignore this production data now because you already have a copy here in your staging and you can start playing around with your staging environment right so that's how basically your disk copy would be used it's very important from interview point of view people will ask you can you tell me how do you uh, you know like transfer the data from one environment to another environment the answer is disk copy okay now let us try to see uh, how exactly this disk copy can uh, can be used okay so i'll go back to my uh, screen again so say say screen and say sir so we are now talking about disk copy right so it is it can be used to copy the files across cluster right and as i said say you have two cluster production and staging and you can definitely do a disk copy from uh, staging to prod or prod to stage and so on now see here you would basically do something like this if you want to do a disk copy then you will basically use something like this hadoop you will say hyphen hyphen config then some location which has all the configuration to establish that connections okay and uh, what to put and what not to put that all would be done by your admin teams now you'll say disk copy and you can say i want to use this much of memory for my disk copy so 24000 mb right is what i i'm uh, i'm looking to uh, use to do this copy because the data could be very huge and then you need a lot of memory as well and then i'm saying i want to use 100 mappers that would be used in this whole transaction and i fn pb that is a copy and this is the source production to staging okay that's how you do okay now as i said this hadoop configuration is a place which contains a lot of files like this okay and in all these files you would have a sufficient configuration which can be used to establish a connection between your prod and uh, between your prod and staging okay now do you want to test this disk copy in a single node cluster if yes then it is super simple what you need to do is you just have to edit your map 
red side dot xml okay so let's do this we'll see if we have configured that or not most probably we have but then let's do a check okay right so let me go down and let's see what actually we are talking about am map env reduce env am map env and reduce env so these parameters are required if you want to do even a disk copy in your machine okay so this is what i want you to do but then we have already done it as part of our uh, hadoop installation if we have not done this uh, if we have not set up this piece of you know uh, configuration then please do that okay so once this is done restart your hadoop single node cluster i think it's not really even required and then you can start doing a disk copy so, okay so let us try to check this disk copy now what i'll do is i'll just say hadoop disk copy hadoop disk copy this is my source and this is my destination okay so let's go back here say escape colon wq all right now we have all done that so you don't even have to worry about this and let's try to trigger this command okay and this is how it looks like okay this would be a proper map reduce job if you see a map reduce job was started right and then it will run and it will take little time it could take a one minute two minutes five minutes ten minutes 20 minutes and all and then you see you would see a output like this where you can see that it is completed successfully right and that actually means that yes your job was successful and then if you are done just go and check this particular location you should have the data in this location now let me go back okay let me say hadoop fs ls and that particular path now if you see we can see that there is a path here and let's try to see if i can do a cat okay hadoop fs hyphen cat right so i can see that the file was copied into uh word a b c dot txt so the above command will copy word one dot txt into another file word underscore a b c dot txt this command should basically be used to transfer file across the cluster however here our source and destination is just same just to demonstrate to you this will result in a map reduce job with a below output so you will see the output like this okay the, and that's how your disk copy will work now we'll talk about the last one that is a moving to a queue now this is one of the very important interview question people ask you have a slow uh, running job how would you manage it right you see that the job is running very very slow what are the steps you will do right i'll tell you the the best thing what you should do is see whenever you are working on a big data project right every team will be given a queue okay if you are working on super high projects then the it is the job of the you know admin teams right the devops team to create a queue separately and exclusively only for your project okay so let's say uh, let's say i work with icici loan icici underscore loan right and what kind of loan probably let's say uh home loan right now my team owns this I say say home loan project, right? And what we will do is we will raise a ticket to the DevOps team saying that, hey, we are going to work on a project and I want you to give me a queue, right? And what they will do is they will create a queue for us. And what is this queue? This queue is basically, I would say, see, what is a queue? A queue is basically a line, is not it? Now, this queue basically means for this queue, we will have, we will have certain part of the cluster allocated okay so certain part of cluster would be allocated to this particular queue so that whenever i have to run any job i'll run my job on this queue and i know that i already have few things which is on my name right so i really don't have to wait a long time right most of the time what people do people run the job in a default queue and in default queue there would be so many jobs which is in queue maybe 300 plus jobs are sitting in the queue waiting for their turn if they are not a super high uh, job then then they will be executed in the uh, in, in the general queue but then if you are working on some production level stuff you you have a job which needs to be run on the production level right and you really don't want your job to be to be waiting for an hour right or or so so you would basically use a queue right and this queue like just shifting uh, you know your job from one queue to other queue can help you to speed up your job okay so if at all any job is running very slow the very first thing what i will do is change the queue okay because i know that i would be given a separate queue okay because i'm working on a super high 
project so i would be given a separate queue i'll just change my queue so that my job starts running very fast i've, I've seen like one job which is still you know on like we're still running for 30 minutes at just one percent very slow right was like it completed in just two minutes when i just changed the queue okay so changing the queue is the the first thing i will do because you should not say i'll go to the code and look for optimization right you're running a production job and you do not have that time to just go and uh, like check what kind of code is been written you need something to be to be executed very quick so you should basically change the queue immediately right and if you're working on a good project or or any any real project you will definitely have a queue right because see when you're working on a big team there are so many clusters i have worked with around i think uh, our our staging environment was around 300 node cluster the other cluster was around 600 nodes for us it does not even matter you know like ram like we just we just feel hey we don't really care we have a lot of uh, resources right but then many people runs the, their job it's not me who only runs the job right many people run the job and then we have a dedicated queue the moment we see that okay this has to be executed really fast we change the queue that's what you can do now i'll also show you how can you change the queue right so let us see this now look into this example wherein we executed one disk copy job right and this this copy job is also map reduce job is not it so this this copy job is also map reduce job now when you just go down you will find that this job has a job id see here this job has a job id check it out here this is the job id right so every job whatever you submit this would have a job id see a job 1588 some some and 001 again you can also see that one application id is also generated for this right so let me just let me show you in the virtual machine itself now let me go a little up and you will see one job id right and you will also see one application id the numbers are same this this number and this numbers are same is not it these two numbers are same is not it now all you need to do is let's assume that this job has not succeeded and it is taking a lot of time right so it's taking a lot of time so what you need to just do is you just need to say this you will say yarn application move to queue and that then that job id here right i'll say application id all together right because everything is an application so that application id from the above job and you will say hyphen q and give the q name and right now i'm saying q um, i'm saying root dot default but then you will have a you will have a q name given to you by your your devops team right and you will always use that q name here and then you will see your job is really doing great right so I'll just say paste. Let's see what the output it, it is giving. It might be giving you the output that this job does not exist, right? So application not found. But then if you give the real application number, if you give the real application ID, and if you say, um, if that is still running, then it will say successfully move this job into this queue. That is the message you will get, okay? And that's how you'll be basically able to change the queue.